Hi, I'm Allie. And I'm Becky. We are registered dietitians that are passionate about food as medicine. In today's video, we are going to be covering the topic of PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome, including some of the common symptoms, some of the drivers of PCOS, and both food as medicine and supplement solutions. So kicking it off, let's talk about what constitutes PCOS. So often PCOS is used as a blanket term for symptoms, and we see the primary element of PCOS with painful or irregular menstrual cycles. We also can see in individuals with PCOS elevated insulin levels and elevated blood sugar, increased body weight or weight gain, and centralized obesity. We can see individuals with PCOS having more androgenic expression, which can be seen with acne, elevations in DHEA and testosterone. We can see an imbalance in the female hormones with too little progesterone and excess estrogen or estrogen dominance. And then we can even see symptoms of hair thinning on the head, but facial hair growth, which all can tie with this imbalance in hormone expression. Now, some OBGYNs will actually do an alternative ultrasound to confirm the presence of cysts on the ovaries, whereas other practitioners will use just a multitude of these symptoms to use as a diagnosis for PCOS. A bunch of different reasons that PCOS can occur, these symptoms can start to crop up. So let's start with insulin resistance is the big one. Yes, I think that insulin resistance is a big element here because insulin growth hormone can play a role with our sexual hormone binding globulin, which is basically the lock and key mechanism of how sex hormone is expressed in our body. So we see individuals that have a refined carbohydrate diet in excess or eating a lot of sugar and have elevated insulin levels in response to that high carb intake as being at high risk for PCOS. And then oftentimes coupled with insulin resistance or in addition to, we can see inflammatory drivers of PCOS. So in an inflammatory state, our hormone expression just isn't happening the way it's supposed to in the body. Most definitely. We can see stress as a primary driver element because when we're under that fight or flight response, we're actually stimulating our adrenal glands. So as I said before, androgenic patterns of hormones. So if we're in fight or flight stress signaling, we're driving the adrenal glands versus the ovaries in sexual hormone production. So we could get that cortisol steal from pregnenolone, the master hormone, and that excess cortisol just goes back to driving more belly fat. And then nutrient deficiency is also a really big driver in PCOS, especially things like omega-3s, inositol, magnesium, and vitamin D. Yes. And in the world of the microbiome, we've talked in prior videos, like an estrogen dominance video, about the role of the estrobolome. So there's this inter-network of our estrogen communication in our gut and how our gut bacteria strains can play an interplay with estrogen expression. Also, our colon plays a role in detoxifying excess estrogen buildup. And like I said, we often see estrogen dominance in a state of PCOS. And then we'll also see in individuals who've gone off birth control, maybe in this post-birth control kind of syndrome state, expressing with PCOS, whether they had it prior and they were put on the birth control to kind of blanket that sim those symptoms, or the birth control has actually contributed to hormonal imbalance, nutrient deficiency, and then driving PCOS. Yes, unfortunately birth control can even mess with your microbiome, right, so there's exactly. a multitude of factors there. And with birth control, we're using synthetic hormone to, like you said, override your body's signals, and often then your body gets not lazy, but maybe not optimal in its endogenous or your body's natural production. All right, now let's talk six solutions for some of these drivers of PCOS. Yeah, so in each of these departments of drivers of the PCOS syndrome, we can see both a food as medicine and a supplement intervention. So the first one that I would start with is lowering your carbohydrate intake. Again, insulin goes up in response of glucose spikes, and glucose spikes occur from excessive carbohydrate intake. So the first recommendation would be shifting from your current diet to a low glycemic, maybe pale 
paleo type diet, which is free of grains and just has starchy vegetables. And then I would even suggest going lower into a nutritional ketosis state. We see a lot of improvements of nutritional ketosis because that actually aids in insulin sensitivity and brings our insulin levels significantly lower. Now, if you're working on toggling carbs out or you are to incorporate carbs in your diet, you may wanna consider our berberine boost. Berberine has actually been shown in clinical studies to have similar effects of the drug metformin. Now, metformin is an oral hypoglycemic drug or a drug that lowers your blood sugar that's often used in the world of prediabetes and diabetes, as well as the world of infertility. So using berberine boost is a great way to get that oral hypoglycemic effect or blood sugar lowering effect, which in turn aids in that insulin sensitivity. And we've also seen in clinical studies that the use of berberine can support uterine tissue health and even reduce fibroid growth in the uterus. And then second up would be increasing your omega-3s, whether via wild caught fish in the diet or bringing in strategic omega-3 supplementation like our EPA DHA. So we're decreasing systemic inflammation, lowering reactive oxygen species in the body, and we're increasing our cell membrane integrity and really helping with that hormone signaling so the signals can be seen more clearly in the body. Yes. And the third one, which is really important, is stress harnessing. So you can do lifestyle support like meditation, prayer, mantra, breathing techniques, yoga, anything to get into that parasympathetic regulatory state versus that sympathetic fight or flight response. And in the world of food as medicine, I would encourage playing with adaptogens. So one of my favorite adaptogen food blends is the Cocotropics from Wild Foods. They use raw maca. Maca is an adaptogen that we have featured before in our raw walnut caramel. So you can check out the recipe here. And maca aids in hitting the pituitary gland in the brain, which can support sexual hormone support, as well as reduce that stress steal in the body and aiding in stress resilience. There's also some adaptogens adaptogenic mushrooms in here. So there's going to be reishi and cordyceps in here, raw cacao powder, turmeric for that anti-inflammatory effect. And this would be lower impact than like a caffeinated beverage of coffee. So coffee is going to stimulate that epinephrine or adrenaline surge, whereas the cocotropics can help to kind of bring your brain online while still supporting with stress resilience. In the world of supplements, I would highly suggest the Adaptogen Boost. This formula has three powerful players to aid in harnessing the stress stallion in your brain while still supporting stress-induced fatigue. So you can still have really clear thought processes and good resilience to stressors without the burnout to your adrenal glands. So this features cordyceps, rhodiola and panax ginseng and rhodiola has actually been shown in clinical studies to support menstrual cycle regulation and ovulation and then in the world of micronutrient deficiency inositol is probably the biggest player so this b family vitamin actually helps to support intercellular communication or signaling We've also seen in studies that two to four grams can actually improve ovulation and improve insulin signaling in the body. So that would be like half to one scoop of our relax and regulate. We can see inositol in our citrus and our leafy greens. Yes. And we've actually seen inositol as one of the most powerful ways to bring down that androgen excess. Yes. So for women with PCOS, they'll often see consistency of use of our Relax and Regulate, stopping that facial hair growth, as well as supporting the hair growth on the head, bringing down the DHEA levels. And so it mellows you out while supporting that insulin sensitivity. So like we said earlier, some of these powerful tools have a multitude of factors of beneficial outcomes. Yeah, it can even reduce acne as well, which is very common with the PCOS population. Yes, and then the Relax and Regulate Beyond Inositol also right. has magnesium bisglycinate, which we know stress depletes magnesium. So getting all the good stuff there. In the world of the microbiome, we're thinking of getting in fermented foods and probiotic rich foods. So this could be yogurt, this could be sauerkraut, kimchi, pickled vegetables. 
uh, kombucha. This is my favorite kombucha here, the Pinot Sage by Marin County. Uh, and these are all going to help to give you the powerful good bugs to support serotonin and GABA, those feel-good neurotransmitters, but also to create balance in that estrobilome. So that communication of our sexual hormone and our microbiome is key. Now, if you're not sure if you tolerate probiotics or you're not sure of the status of your microbiome, we would suggest doing the probiotic challenge using our Restore Baseline probiotic. And if you're dealing with a new diagnosis of PCOS, COS, I would go right away and up to the targeted strength probiotic. This is going to be 60 billion colony forming units of lacto and bifido bacteria, which are the two most widely researched strains that support optimal microbiome function. And then last but not least, vitamin D deficiency plays a huge role in insulin signaling in the body. So seeing more of that insulin resistance with vitamin D deficiency, we can also see vitamin D to actually improve that FSH and LH ratio. So getting things like eggs, pasture-raised proteins, mushrooms at food, as food sources, and then bringing in a vitamin D3, K2 blend like our vitamin D balance blend would be a great solution as well. Yes. So if you found these food as medicine and supplement tips helpful, make sure to leave a comment below on what was an aha moment for you, or if you're using one of our formulas and seeing successful outcomes, we'd love for you to share. Make sure you like this video and subscribe so that you can stay on top of all of our functional medicine and food as medicine tips. Great, back to you, Ellie. Oh, yeah.